Thank you for joining today's webinar, AccuQuality webinar series, part two. Today we'll be talking about how you can comply with GMP requirements and quality management systems online with the help of QDMS as well as as well as Acumetica. Uh, today with me, I am with my colleagues and we'll be covering quality management systems in general, how you can comply them uh, also in a paperless environment by utilizing Acumetica as well as as well as QDMS's uh, capabilities and how we can basically improve our processes. That's what we'll be talking about. Is uh, if you join our webinars uh, last week, we have uh, these webinars every Monday. We call it Quality Mondays. And uh, every Monday on Mondays at 2 o'clock, we meet and we talk about how you can utilize both systems, QDMS and Acumetica together to comply with various quality management systems. There are a lot of quality management systems in the market and uh, we like to also address uh, as many as we can to help you and help other companies, other professionals comply these requirements digitally. My name is Kevin Devejoglu. I am the Managing Director of Beamster International. As a company, we are based in uh, New York City and I'll be talking about our company uh, in a minute. Also for future reference, before we get into details, uh, every Monday we schedule these webinars coming up in terms of how to comply with various quality and uh, and compliance uh, re requirements in a digital environment with the help of Acumetica as well as QDMS. So this is our uh, this is our schedule for coming weeks and you are of course more than welcome to join us. Uh, next week we'll be talking about ISO 9001 and ISO 9001 auditor uh, uh, Alex Kovartorov will be with us and he'll be talking uh, details about ISO 9001. Um, if you remember last week he was uh, our guest uh, actually he joined the uh, day on the webinar and he talked about ISO 9001 on a very very high level in terms of the uh, uh, foundational um, information of ISO 9001 that he, he shared with us last week. So uh, next week we like to talk more in ISO 9001, why it is important, how you can comply with ISO 9001 and then we'll take it from there and then we'll apply it to QDMS and Acumetica into as to how to comply these, uh, these requirements in a digital environment. Uh, we'll follow also uh, in May again every Monday as to uh, ISO 13 for ID5 for medical device industry. We'll talk about uh, SQF in food uh, industry. Uh, we'll talk about uh, good manufacturing practices as to how to manage facilities. Um, I have uh, I put together some information about uh, good manufacturing practices GMP, and um, when I share some information with you, the meeting, uh, the uh, scheduled webinar on May 18 will be more uh, more helpful uh, for you, uh, uh, we believe. And on May May 25th, we'll be talking about AS9100. That's a uh, that's a uh, quality management requirement in aerospace and aviation industry. And more to come. Basically, this is for the next uh, next five weeks that I wanted to share with you. And you are more than welcome to join us. We'll be happy to have you, and we'll be happy to share information with you. So let's talk about our uh, what is on our schedule for today. Uh, as I mentioned today, I'm not uh, alone. I am with my colleagues, and together. Uh, we'll be addressing uh, different subjects for you. Uh, before we get into details of good manufacturing practices, uh, QDMS and also uh, Acumetica, I'd like to talk about who we are and what we do uh, in, a, in a very uh, short section uh, and limited number of uh, slides for you. So as a company, Beamster International, we are based in New York, New York City, and we help companies simplify their processes and we have companies simply uh, adopt digital transformation. That's what we do. And we believe uh, believe that that's very helpful for companies to uh, improve their processes. We are very active in various business communities. Uh, American Society for Quality is one of them. Uh, quality is uh, one of the subjects that we really, 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 really expert, we have expertise in. And we like to share as much information as we can with different companies in different organizations and different environments. Uh, we also have an internship program in New York area. We basically teach uh, university students. We, in, we they have internships with us to learn how to do pre-sales and software engineering. That's one of our uh, one of our uh, social responsibility uh, uh, projects. Let's talk about Beamster International. 
uh, as a company. So uh, we are based in New York City. Uh, we have global uh, presence. Uh, we are active also uh, in many different regions. We have uh, also a location in uh, Europe as well as uh, Europe in Netherlands, also in Istanbul metro area. So we are a group of companies, actually. We've been around since 1998. As a group, we are about 200 people. We are a growing organization. Started in 2018, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development became one of our investors. So with their help and support, we have more visibilities in the international markets, that's for sure. Also, we have more resources to invest in our products and also support our uh, our partners, basically. Um, in terms of certifications, we are ISO 9001 certified as well as ISO 271 certified. Also, we have uh, ISO 15504 uh, uh, certification available in our uh, software products development process. We are Akimetica ISV, we are Microsoft Gold Vendor Partner, we are certified as a SAP vendor, and we are also a Mayabi ISP, ISP partner as well. So we are very close to various uh, ERP ecosystems, and um, I'll explain more about these uh, in a minute uh, why it is that way. So since 1998, we have been f very focused on our product range. We have EBA as our workflow and document management platform. Uh, it helps companies automate their processes. That's an electronic business automation platform. Beam is our asset maintenance facility, fleet and energy management software. So you can manage your assets, fleets, uh, properties, facilities, and manage maintenance operations in a digital environment. QDMS is our quality risk compliance and audit management software. Uh, we'll talk more about QDMS in a minute. And uh, one can basically comply with many different quality management systems in a digital environment. And finally, we have Ensemble as our business process uh, management software with balanced scorecard as well as uh, performance management capabilities. And in bottom, uh, you can see two solutions of ours. These are solutions built on EBA because EBA is a platform to uh, build uh, applications to automate business processes. We have contract management solution to help companies manage their contracts in a digital environment. And we have uh, EBA ITSM to help companies manage their IT service management operations in a digital environment. As you see on the screen, uh, QDMS for quality management, being for asset management, maintenance management, and contract management solutions. These are Acumetica certified solutions. On this slide, you can see how we position our products. Ensemble is more of a managerial tool with performance management and process management capabilities. EBA as a workflow engine, Beam as an asset management and maintenance management software, QDMS as a quality management software. They are to uh, they are designed to automate processes. Our systems run standalone, and they are also integrated with each other, and they are ready to integrate with any. CRM or any other enterprise uh, or any other software available in the marketplace. All we are asking is actually web service APIs for integration. Our systems uh, run on cloud, they run on on-premise servers, they are web-based, also we have mobile apps available. So we have up-to-date technology and we keep investing in our products. Uh, here you can see how many projects we have deployed by the end of last year. Uh, these numbers are also getting higher this year. Uh, for example, QDMS, our quality management system, we have more than 1,000 corporate customers, and we have more than 1 million corporate users, professional users available in the marketplace, which we are proud of, that's our hot seller. And no wonder we have a lot of experience in quality management, because we've been doing it for a long time, and we have many different customers in many different industries, complying with many different uh, requirements, uh, quality and management uh, standard requirements, basically. Uh, moving on, we have Beam uh, as our uh, asset maintenance and facility management system. Uh, right now on Beam, we have about uh, 15 million assets being managed by, by our customers, more than 15 million assets. So that's a lot of assets, a lot of cars, trucks, machinery, equipment, facilities being managed on, on Beam. And uh, we have EBA, uh, and EBA is, a, it is an electronic business automation platform. Right now, we have more than 50,000 business processes running on EBA. And uh, as to uh, Ensemble, that's our um, performance management and business process management uh, software, we have more than 300 customers and it's also uh, growing. Since we are coming from enterprise market historically, we have a lot of uh, enterprise level customers as our references. Uh, we work with Ford, we work with Hyundai, 
We work with 3M in 17 different countries. Uh, we work with Bridgestone as well as we work with um, international paper, uh, Little Caesars, for example. United Nations is one of our customers. We are working with Unilever. Uh, also, we work with Nissan Renault, Renault Alliance, for example. So there are many different companies that we are working with. So for the mid-market, for Acumetica ecosystem, what does it mean, uh, us coming from enterprise market and we have these uh, great reputable companies? So uh, our products are scalable. They scale up and they scale down. So uh, there may be many companies in mid-market. As long as these companies are growing, they are looking for scale. They are looking for actual runway to basically take off. We have that runway, just like Acumetica does. So by using Acumetica as well as using our, our software products, you can basically grow in, uh, in, uh, in your, in your, with your operations, basically. So you don't have to worry about it. That's what it means. So our products are scalable. They are easy to use. They scale up. They scale down. And if you are growing, uh, our products are actually, uh, actually great for you to use on, on daily basis because we have the scale. That's what it means. Since we're going to be talking about today medical device industry as well as pharma industry, we, I also put together some of our references in uh, pharma as well as medical device uh, sector because we have many. Some of them, for example, we work with AstraZeneca, uh, we work with Baxter, for instance. There are other uh, references that we have on the screen, for example, some of them are pharma, suitable companies, some of them are medical device manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, for instance, some of them are medical um, material medical product manufacturers so they are also subject to gmp as well as fda requirements and we have experience in this because we have been doing it uh, for a long time and we have uh, these great references as well uh, great so uh, what i like to do is uh, i like to uh, start with good manufacturing practices so what it is you know why it is important uh, what kind of companies should comply with it and then uh, i'll take it to uh, to the digital environment. So these are the requirements, and then this is how we how you comply. And also uh, we have a section. It also will show you live that uh, uh, you know some of the requirements how you can basically uh, comply with in in uh, in the environment of QBMS, our quality management system, uh, interacting with with Acumetica. So let's talk about good manufacturing practices. So first of all. I use certain sources to put these information together, and my sources are actually basically in the bottom of the of the screen. You can see it. You can always visit it yourself. You know, I get information from FDA's official website. Also, I visited uh, World Health Organization's website to get some uh, credible information because there is a lot of information on uh, on, on internet. It's hard to see which one is correct, which one is not. So I stick with FDA and World Health Organization's information. Uh, and you can always visit and get more information in these links, links that I am sharing with you. So uh, World Health Organization has um, has an established actually good manufacturing practices uh, uh, guideline, and many different countries actually uh, take that as an example and apply it in their own uh, countries, basically. So there are different organizations in different countries uh, uh, administrating and uh, managing the uh, good manufacturing practices, basically. So uh, in the United States, we have FDA, right? We have Food and Drug Administration. So uh, we follow FDA's instructions, guidelines, and they are basically the, uh, the administrative body in the United States. That's, uh, that's what we need to know at this moment. Also, in terms of industries, so if uh, for companies, actually, uh, manufacturers, uh, processors, and, and, and packagers of drugs, uh, medicine, medical devices, as well as uh, blood, they need to take certain uh, uh, measures to make sure that their products are safe, their products are actually pure and effective. That's basically the, uh, the bottom line of these uh, good manufacturing practices. So if you are manufacturing drugs, uh, medicine, if you are processing it, if you are packaging it, or that may be also medical devices or blood, for example, you are subject to uh, good manufacturing practices. Basically, you, need to, you need to implement it. You need to comply, and you need to document it, and you need to be able to read it for, for any, any inspection and, and audits. That's what it means. So the bottom line is simply um, uh, countries, as, uh, as for GMP, GMP is basically helping uh, companies as well as consumers to make sure the medicine that we use, the medical devices are being used in hospitals, uh, are basically uh, coming from a safe environment with actually secure, safe, and reliable uh, environment with certain 
policies and procedures, basically. So the idea is to make sure there is the that that uh, uh, the safe environment that there is that confidence uh, that is what they are actually trying to establish. And um, there are certain rules as to comply with good manufacturing practices, right? So I try to put some of them, of course. Uh, they are not all of them. But these are uh, the, the major of them, the main rules, uh, let's say. So we need to make sure companies have, uh, we have trained uh, and efficient staff uh, uh, available uh, to manage the manufacturing operations in, uh, our, let's say, a pharmaceutical company or let's say medical device company, for instance. We need to make sure we also keep all the records of manufacturing operations, the processes. That's very important. Facilities must be clean and they need to be, they need to have, uh, they have to have the uh, hygiene environment, the hygiene has to be managed and also controlled and inspected regularly and that needs to be also maintained. And there has to be also policies and procedures to make sure these facilities are actually uh, following these uh, rules and regulations, that's very important. And I'll address also facility management as well in the, in the sense of digital compliance. Uh, also the temperature as well as uh, humidity control has to be in place in uh, manufacturing environments. That is also very important. And I'll also explain this, how we can actually uh, comply it as well in a digital environment. Um, also, companies uh, operating in medical device industry as well as uh, pharma industry, they need to make sure they have written standard operating procedures in place to make sure that uh, there is a safe and hygienic work environment while manufacturing, uh, let's say, medical devices or, or let's say, uh, let's say, medicine, right? You know, for, a, for a pharma company, for instance. So, and also each step uh, must be validated. Validation is also a very important piece uh, in terms of uh, software products, for instance. But you know, just doing the job, you know, ma making the manufacturing, doing the manufacturing of the, uh, the of the medicine or, or let's say, medical devices, for instance. That is very important as well, the validation in terms of uh, SOPs, uh, in, terms of, in terms of policies, procedures, and all the machinery and equipment that we are using. Uh, each manufacturing process must be recorded. That's another uh, rule, rule of uh, good manufacturing practices. Um, the, uh, uh, also the distribution uh, of each batch has to be documented, and this, that needs to be also traceable. If something goes wrong, for example, we, uh, we, we need to be able to trace these uh, products, either that's a medical device or let's say medicine, for instance. And uh, on day-to-day -day operations, if there is any deviation uh, from the SOP, from the standard operating procedures, that needs to be investigated, that needs to be recorded, and if there is a way to take any corrective action, that needs to be also taken, and that needs to be documented. That's very, very important as well. Um, uh, one of the important things also complaints okay or let's say feedbacks or complaints and feedbacks for instance so every single complaints actually is, is very important it's also always important but for good manufacturing practices extra important and uh, these complaints needs to be recorded that need, they need to be um, uh, documented and that ne they need to be actually investigated the idea is to find the root cause right so we need to make root cause analysis after validating the customer complaint we need to make sure you know we follow all the SOPs, we follow all the written and prepared policies and procedures in place when we are doing that manufacturing, for example. So if there is something wrong, the deviation may be coming from the operator, maybe coming from the, uh, the SOP itself, for example. So whatever the result may be, we need to make sure we resolve it, we address it, we document it, and we need to improve the process okay, in, a, uh, in a safe and hygiene environment and uh, keeping the public safety uh, in, in mind uh, and as our, our as our priority, simply. So these are some of the rules of of good manufacturing practices. I will say main rules, but there are more, of course. But you know, basically, for us to you know talk about how to comply with good manufacturing practices, I believe that's a uh, good foundational uh, information as to where good manufacturing practices coming from, uh, who is the administrative body, what is the administrative body, and then why it is important, who are subject to uh, good manufacturing practices and what we need to follow, what we need to comply, how we can f uh, comply with good manufacturing practices. So we laid this foundation right now. So let's talk about digital transformation of quality and compliance management, right? So good manufacturing, good manufacturing practices is one of the compliance that we need to follow as to, uh, uh, as to uh, operate in the pharma industry is to operate in medical device industry, for example. So that's, uh, you, have to, you have to comply. 
So how do we comply and how do we actually follow these rules and regulations in a digital environment? So uh, we just address these uh, good manufacturing practices, right? So in terms of uh, complying these quality and management standards and regulatory standards, you know, why do you need to comply? So the reason is, first of all, customers are requiring it and competitors are getting it. And just like we saw in, uh, in the good manufacturing practices piece a minute ago, it's basically uh, regular, regulators, uh, you know, federal, state or local uh, governments are asking for it. You are required to comply. You have to comply. So that's another reason that we have to comply with quality and management standards. Um, also, if we are to open up uh, new markets, for example, we need to comply with different quality and management standards to improve operations and to, you know, uh, to have the growth for our company. That's if we like to position our company for growth. Of course, these are you know what we have been reading, what we have been hearing. But when we go into market, uh, also as a company, as being international, we also see many different uh, challenges that companies are facing uh, to comply with different quality and management standards. One of them is, for example, to, uh, they they think there is too much paperwork. There is too much paperwork. You need to manage it. You need to actually um, organize it. It needs you need to retrieve it whenever it's needed. So that is one of the things that you need to manage because every single action that we are taking has to comply in a quality and management standard that needs to be that needs to have a proof. So the proof is basically a document that's traceable, that's manageable, you can always revisit it, we can retrieve it. That's that's very important and that's one of the challenges that we have been hearing from the companies. Um, sometimes it's uh, difficult to maintain the documentation too. So it's not only about making or publishing the document only once. You may have a policy or you may have a, even SOP at the moment, but three months from now, six months from, from now, you may update that SOP, okay? Because the idea is for ideas to have continuous improvement. So for continuous improvement, you may update it, right? So when you update it, that's, a, that's versioning basically. So you need to also keep the version while you're also keeping the previous version. Right, so it gets more and more difficult every time you make updates, uh, revisions, new versions are coming up. So maintaining the documentation in an organized manner that you can retrieve anytime you like uh, is also challenging. Uh, also, it's kind of uh, difficult to um, keep an eye on the standards sometimes when you focus on the job itself on daily basis. That's another challenge that we have been getting, uh, we have been hearing uh, as reports from our from our customers. Uh, the good thing is in digital age, uh, as for documents, uh, it's much easier to manage documents in a digital environment. Updates are easier. Uh, any update that you do on any of your documentation policies and procedures actually can be managed in digital environment and also can be traced. That is also uh, much easier in in in, a, uh, in this uh, day of age. And all these are simplified. All these are very important for compliance in any quality and management standard. Uh, also. Uh, you can actually uh, you can actually train, and you can also help your employees actually improve itself themselves as well uh, in that in that uh, in that digital environment. It's also much easier than running and complying in a uh, in a paper based environment. So this is our approach to digital transformation of quality management. So when we take quality and compliance management, we have we see three P's, these three P's, the three pillars in a way that that's basically the backbone of any quality management system, but we apply it basically in a uh, in a digital environment as to comply uh, with the standards, also adapt digital transformation. So there is assurance piece. Assurance means the quality management system that you are subject to. That could be ISO, that could be AS9100, that could be SQF, that, that could be DRC, that could be GMP good manufacturing practice. That may be your system that you are following, right? So that basically sets the rule, that basically sets the, sets the tone in the organization. And um, we need to also have the controls in place. These quality controls may be, uh, may be when I'm receiving the raw material, maybe when I'm doing the manufacturing, maybe right after the manufacturing, I may put some control points, for example, to make sure that I have secure, safe, and a uh, reliable environment that actually every time I produce my products, say in this uh, GMP case, for example, every time I produce actually drugs, these are healthy. They are coming from hygienic, hygienic environment. And um, 
I follow my policies and procedures. So how am I going to how am I going to make sure to make sure I need to uh, have control points? And let's just remember these control points not only about manufacturing, by the way. I may want to put control points in purchasing. I may want to put control points in sales. I may want to put control points in marketing, for example, which there are a lot of regulations of. Also sales, for example, another piece that we can think about. So it's not only about manufacturing itself. We can implement it to other administrative operations also to make sure uh, we are following our quality management system in a way that uh, in a way that that's safe, secure, and we basically guarantee every single time that we operate on a daily basis, we actually produce um, same quality of products, same quality of service, all the time, every time. That's basically the idea. And the third piece uh, on our uh, on our framework is actually predict prediction, right? So it actually touches the IoT uh, technology uh, and. Uh, just like actually GMP uh, dictates, I have to be able to monitor the uh, the, the temperature of the environment for uh, for having a safe, uh, uh, healthy, and hygienic environment. Right? I need to be able to also uh, remotely monitor the um, the humidity, for example. So these are also these are all can be can be done manually, which is not ideal. But right now with IoT technology, you can easily do it remotely. From where you are, that's basically a great advantage. And these, this is basically, these are basically three pillars of quality and compliance management framework that we put together to be proactive and to be able to adapt digital transformation. So, uh, in this sense, uh, we have as uh, Beamster International, we have four uh, four products. Uh, I must say five with the contract manager solution uh, certified by uh, Archimetica. So. Uh, we basically offer these four products, EBA for the workflow, QDM as for quality management and risk and audit management, BEAM for asset and, and maintenance and facility management, Ensemble for performance management and contract management solution. So in terms of um, uh, complying with GMP, of course, uh, QDMS is the uh, ideal uh, solution in Acumetic ecosystem. QDMS is an Acumetica certified solution. Uh, we also got the recertification actually. It hasn't been posted yet. That's why it says 2018, but uh, it's actually 2019 R2 right now. And um, that is a, uh, that is basically the way to go to comply with uh, GMP and other quality management standards in a digital environment, in a paperless environment, which is traceable, uh, reportable, uh, and also it has an audit trail and more. And if you notice in the GMP uh, regulations, there is also facility management regulations that one has to follow and comply with. Uh, and for that, we are uh, we have Beam, that's our asset maintenance and facility management software. It is uh, also uh, Acumetica certified solution. And with the help of Beam, working with QDMS, working with Acumetica together in an integrated environment, one can easily manage actually GMP compliance and other uh, quality time management standard compliance uh, requirements. So that is uh, also important to share. So uh, when you are complying with any standards of uh, for for pharma or for medical medical device industry, for example, the software has to have certain um, uh, features, basically. So it has to follow, it has to comply with CFR part 11 requirements, which are very actually detailed actually on FDA, FDA's website actually. Uh, it has certain guidelines. So the software needs to be able to uh, have a, a secure environment. You need to have unique username, unique password, you need to have encryptions in place, you need to have the backup in place as to the, 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 the information that you are keeping, uh, for, in, for instance. Uh, also, if you're not using the system for a while, it needs to have automatic logout, for example. Um, also, that if there is anything, anything needs to be changed in the past, the system is not supposed to be letting you change it without certain uh, proper uh, permissions in place, for instance. And the system needs to be validated uh, regularly. That's also very important to comply with FDA regulations. Uh, then we look at uh, these uh, slides. So I put together these two solutions, QDMS for quality management and BEAM for facility management. Today we'll just talk about QDMS as to quality and compliance management. Uh, so both systems, QDMS and Beam, they are working with an IoT device. Okay, we have uh, we are ready to integrate. So and we have partners, and we've been doing it uh, 
for a long time. So what it means is uh, you can remotely monitor the temperature or humidity of uh, of the environment, for example. And if there is any irregularity, then uh, the email is sent to uh, our software products and we can trigger a work order, for example. And it can also be recorded. That needs to be recorded because that's something uh, unusual happens. So from the GMP point of view, you need to actually capture that. So where do you capture that? Where do you keep this? You keep this on QDMS. QDMS grab it, grabs it, and you can actually investigate it. You know, what happened? How come the temperature isn't how it is supposed to be? Something is wrong? Something is wrong. What is wrong? And why it happened? You can do the investigation, the root cause analysis. And that needs to be also documented. And that's also the QDMS job to basically help you manage all these uh, uh, investigations as well as document it for, uh, for future reference. Um, in the manufacturing execution system, CRM uh, system also uh, uh, also uh, able to work with uh, as well as QDMS for quality management or being for facility and asset management, for example. And both systems are integrated with Acumetica already. Uh, these are certified solutions running with Acumetica, so they can work together in an integrated environment. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, remote monitor monitor temperature, vibration, your machinery, equipment. The manufacturing execution system uh, also uh, is working also with uh, Acumetic ERP system as well as CRM. So these uh, the data can come and go based on uh, what needs to be done. So that is a great environment. Uh, that is basically a digital transformation. That's how you can actually comply with these uh, quality management and um, regulatory standards in a digital environment. Uh, GMP is one of them and many others simply. And, but this is basically the way to go in, in Acumetic ecosystem that, that we believe. All right, so let's talk about QDMS a little bit more. Okay. So until now, uh, before we talk about QDMS in detail, so we lay the foundation of what the GMP is, where it is coming from, what kind of um, uh, requirements uh, it has uh, on a high level, and I also share some of the sources that you can always visit anytime uh, you like to get more information, of course. And then we talk about how we are actually looking at um, digital transformation of quality management. We have the framework that we put together. We call it a proactive management framework. So in that framework, we talk about the uh, quality assurance, quality control, and, and, and also a predictive quality piece. So right now, we like to also uh, talk about um, some detailed information about QDMS, what it is capable of, and how we can actually help companies comply with GMP and other requirements. So uh, QDMS actually, uh, uh, is a web-based uh, architecture. You can access it from anywhere, just like Acumetica. Once we deploy it on a on an on-premise server or on a cloud account, that's basically just like connecting a website, simply. And it is designed for uh, for for you to comply with any quality and management standards. Okay, um, GMP is one of them. ISO is another of them. SQA, PRC can all be managed on QDMS because the system is very flexible and is modular, and we configure it accordingly so that you can use it in in any uh, standard that you are complying with. And uh, let's also remember the compliance piece is very important, right? Um, so in terms of GMP, you have to comply with good manufacturing practices to be able to actually uh, produce medicine, to be able to produce uh, medical devices. So uh, having this uh, flexibility in QDMS side, being able to comply with any standard is also a great advantage in that sense. Um, the system runs. Uh, on cloud as well as on-premise servers, so you can basically access in, 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 uh, at any location that you're at, and it has a, it has a modular structure. So uh, when we connect with any uh, basically uh, quality manager, for example, you know we explain just like we just explained today, you know where we are coming from, and then uh, showing our modules, and they can can choose what they like. They typically love it. They like it very much because it's good to have the flexibility. So we are not trying to offer entire software solution. We are showing the, the benefits of it. We are showing the features of it, and you can pick and choose what you like. Uh, we have more than 30 modules available. These are just some of, some of them, by the way. So the control document management is to manage the documentation, policies, procedures, uh, SOPs uh, in the digital environment. You can upload your first versions, and then whenever you need to make any changes, you can also update it in the system. The previous version is kept, and also you can make the new version available. As soon as you make it available, it is basically sent out to the team members who are uh, supposed to be getting that updates automatically. So 
you send it out and then also we have the tracing capabilities you know you get the email you know you get the updates we know if you read it or if you don't read it so we know we have all these uh, information captured in, on QDMS site to help call to managers and compliance officers basically uh, help uh, manage the, the system uh, which is very important I call the control document management is the is backbone backbone of any quality management system whether you are compliant with GMP ISO any of that documentation is the key and you have to be able to manage it um, there are companies uh, compliant on paper but it's very difficult to keep up with it it's not really sustainable and it's very difficult to pass any audits when you're compliant on paper it's hard to retrieve it hard to uh, put it together it's uh, even hard for uh, team members to find the right uh, version and, uh, and read it on, on daily basis so in that sense the control document management is, is, is very important customer complaint we just saw it in uh, GMP requirements so customer complaints are important they are serious so you need to be able to um, capture the customer complaint the details where it is coming from what product are we talking about what is the barcode any serial number any other number that we need to capture to, to trace where it is coming from uh, that is what you do on the on the customer complaint module you get all these details and you start the investigation just like GMP dictates QDMS has same same, same capabilities it also helps you uh, start uh, trigger in a way and then manage the customer complaint step by step by step and then based on the root cause analysis you can take correct direction you can take an action for example maybe some of the team members need additional training for certain activities you can also use the training module for training activities perhaps or you can take corrective action for example to improve the process so let's just remember all these uh, systems that we are complying with GMP ISO SPF DRC AS9100 you name it all these systems underneath the bottom line is basically to establish two things a continuous improvement B increasing customer satisfaction so so these two so these two uh, goals are basically the key these are the foundation basic that you know where you like to go you know continuous improvement I like to do my what I'm doing better and better every single day and I need to make sure when I, when I am doing it better I need to make sure customers are satisfied so uh, increasing customer satisfaction is also very important in this sense so that is what we are doing in QDMS helping you establish the culture of continuous improvement as well as making sure that customer uh, satisfaction is actually there for you to track and for you to improve there is audit management module for uh, internal and external audits that you can uh, you can run um, we have a survey module where you can actually do surveys to get feedback from uh, from from customers uh, for example as well as employees for instance and you can also use survey module as an employee test uh, module because uh, there is also a requirement in GMP as you saw one of the important thing is having trained employees in, in step so you know in this sense we need to make sure we have the trainings in place okay either uh, on the on premises or, or somewhere else for instance and these trainings needs to be uh, uh, needs to be periodic and they need to be documented okay and one of the ways to make sure uh, one gets the training is to make sure that the employee gets a, gets a test you know answers certain questions to make sure you know uh, they they took the class they uh, understood the training and everything is in place and and clear uh, calibration modules are important to make sure uh, devices and equipments are actually adjusted uh, these uh, machinery that we have machinery equipment that we we, we have at our at our plants uh, during manufacturing they need to be adjusted from time to time sometimes monthly basis sometimes quarterly sometimes annually depends on the sensitivity of the machinery so that is something that that you need to follow up uh, you need to manage also it's also a GMP requirement and calibration module is designed that way uh, risk manager module modules we have on the right side as you see there are uh, different types so risk management becomes more and more important same for GMP same for ISO and other call time management standards uh, and it, of course I have to say in terms of COVID-19 uh, crisis that we have right now even right now we understand the risk how important the risk management is you know like you know sitting down thinking about what is coming and how you, how you can be prepared as a company and as a team so in that sense we have environment uh, risk management module we have health and safety risk management module we have IT asset management module and we have process risk management module where you can uh, 
put together your risks. You can actually uh, put them in order based on uh, the severity of it and importance of it. And then you can also put together a contingency plan. So if this happens, this is what I'm going to do. If that happens, this is what I'm going to do. And you can also take, uh, you can also utilize training module to make sure employees are actually, our team members are actually uh, in the loop in terms of what kind of risks that we have, we are seeing, what kind of contingency plans are there in place. If something happens, then everyone can follow that contingency plan based on the training. So these uh, these are all linked to each other. These modules are individual and they can also work with each other integrated. So that is another advantage that, that we, have, uh, we need to address here. Um, on the right side, there is a suggestion module, instant manager module, uh, work permit module that uh, one can use. And uh, as I said, these are major modules. We have more than 30 modules available, but the good thing is we have different options. Suggestion module, customer complaint module, audit module, and survey module designed to help you get feedback from your customers and from your team members and from your stakeholders. So as, I, uh, as, as we all know, the continuous improvement is very important, but for continuous improvement, you need to get feedback. You need to know how you are doing. So how, we, how are we doing? We can learn from our customers. We can learn, learn our, our team members and stakeholders, and we can get this feedback, and then we can find a way to improve our processes. In that sense, suggestion, uh, customer complaint, survey, audit modules are very important. And in, in many cases, that's actually mandatory to actually have it in place. Let's talk about some use cases before we talk about the product uh, even further. So uh, we have been deploying QDMS since 1998. It's been decades. So we have seen many different customers in many different industries complying with many different standards. There are many, many different standards in the marketplace. That's a, that's a fact. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we have more than 1,000 uh, customers, corporate customers, and more than 1 million users of, of QDMS available. So uh, one of the heavily regulated industries is actually healthcare industry. That's why GMP is very important that we like to we wanted to address today. Uh, one of the companies that we work with uh, in in, uh, in pharma uh, industry, more than 500 employees they have, they have multiple locations and they comply with ISO, uh, GMP, as well as uh, FDA uh, requirements. So uh, before they were uh, managing all these compliance requirements on paper, basically, uh, heavily paper, uh, not much of Word, of Word and Excel, but mostly paper. So uh, they had hard time managing the ISO, GMP, and FDA uh, audits uh, whenever they have, they, they have uh, sometimes um, once a year, sometimes more often, or uh, once in two years, for example. And uh, difficulty, uh, uh, one of the difficulties was to uh, find the policies and procedures and retrieve them from the archive, because they could put everything on paper. They need to organize them in folders and after a while folders go to the archive and you need to go to archive and find them so it gets more and more difficult also in terms of uh, continuous improvement and uh, and increasing customer satisfaction these are two major goals of any uh, quality management uh, management system uh, the important thing is to take corrective action to this end right uh, so uh, it was also difficult for them to take uh, corrective actions because everything is on paper it was hard to gather the information, put, put, put it in front of managers or, or, or group of managers, for example, and decide on how to take corrective action for continuous improvement. They were, that, was, that, was, uh, that was a challenge for them as well. So once we deployed QDMS, uh, we, we helped them digitize their paper-based uh, policies and procedures. Uh, that's what I mean by record, policies, procedures, and SOPs. And they also have a, a chance to access their uh, data remotely from there on. Uh, audits became easier because when the auditor comes, they ask certain uh, uh, certain information. You know, show me this policy, show me this document. You know, this sampling basically they may ask pretty much anything, right? So you need to be prepared. Uh, they start to show these documents, policies, and procedures digitally, so they make the uh, auditor's job much easier. Basically, therefore, they they have an easier uh, and better, I will say, um, audit experience with different uh, authorities. Uh, they increased productivity and also they started to have real corrective action because they started to have data, real data, reliable data on QDMS. And that was a, that was a great improvement for them. Also, let's remember uh, GMP, ISO, SQF, ERC, they are not free, by the way. I mean, for a company to comply with standards, 
they're not just giving you away. I mean, you need to apply and you need to pay for it. And just because you are paying for, let's say, GMP or ISO compliance, that doesn't mean you're going to paste the audit. I mean, pasting the audit is something else. You need to follow the policies and procedures and uh, requirements of the standard, whatever that may be. So uh, having a solution like QDMS also helps you secure your, your investment because that's an investment that you are actually spending to make sure that you are applying for uh, these standards, ISO, GMP, or other standards, for example. Um, having said that, we have another customer, for example, that they, are, uh, uh, they have less employees than the previous example. Uh, they have 70 plus employees, uh, one production uh, facility, not multiple in this, uh, in this use case. Uh, they are on paper. They also have Excel-based uh, uh, processes in place, but they are heavily on paper. And uh, they had similar challenges. Uh, there was a smaller company in the sense of number of employees, but they comply with ISO, GMP, FDA, uh, EUMDR, uh, MDSAP, and, and so these are Canadian, European, and American uh, standards, for example. MDSAP is, uh, is good for, I believe, five countries once you comply. So if you are manufacturing medical device, uh, medical equipment, for example, if you're not complying with EMDR, you cannot sell your medical devices to those uh, countries in EU, uh, uh, EU EU area, for example. Same thing with SOAR, for example. If you're not complying with SOAR, you cannot sell it to Canada from the United States. So these are, uh, you have to comply this. There is no other way. You gotta, you have to. So in that sense, uh, you know, compliant these is compliant compliant these requirements uh, is important. On top of it, you need to also manage, right? So Having these paper-based uh, policies and procedures, also you know controls, audits, and inspections, that was very challenging for them. And every they were they were getting often uh, inspectors and auditors from different uh, bodies, and that was very challenging for them uh, to pass these audits. Uh, once we deployed QDMS, uh, uh, we digitized most of their paperwork, but more importantly, we gave them a chance. It became a chance, an opportunity for them to actually go over their quality management system while complying with. GMP, FDA, in EMDR and others, for example. So that was also very refreshing for them. So they go, they went over their uh, quality management system. Uh, they made a lot of uh, updates, revisions, and we helped them actually reflect it on QDMS in their digital records, simply. And they started to have easier and easier uh, audit experience year by year. So that was that was another example. Um, the healthcare and medical device. Uh, as well as pharma, they are heavily regulated. There are many different standards that they need to follow. So in that sense, QDMS is a lifesaver for many, many quality management uh, professionals. Okay, great. So enough said on my side. And I'd like to hand it over to Sam. Sam is uh, our engineer, software engineer from our engineering team. And he put together a, a demo environment to talk about QDMS as well as Acumatica a little bit. Uh, so what we do is we keep our contact information on the screen, and if you like to continue this conversation, uh, if you have any specific questions, uh, if you like to see our software products running with Acumatica, you can contact us. We can schedule a session. Uh, after Sam's uh, demonstration and presentation, we'll have an also Q and A session that we can address. We can address your your questions. Sam, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, great. So I know you put together a high-level demo environment, demo session for today, just to give our audience an idea. So uh, yes. the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the mic. And thank you for joining this webinar. This is Sam at BIMSU International. So this is the home screen of QDMS. And after you log into QDMS, you can find all your pending tasks, and request for approval on this home screen. So you won't uh, miss any requests after you log into QDMS because all of them will be shown on this home screen. And you can click on it and get a quick connection to those requests. And today I will have a um, high level overview of the module like uh, external customer campaigns and corrective action as known as cover module. So on the left, this is the main menu of QDMS. It shows you all the available modules which are available on your server. So first of all, you can find all your customer complaints, which is um, the feedback from your customer, vendor, or subcontractor. 
as external users. And all the records will be in different status depending on the progress that you're proceeding to or managing this particular record. And you can find your uh, new record right here and pick and choose the customer name, which is integrated with Acumedica. And I will show you right here is my Acumedica page. So this is my customer list. And they're in uh, ascending to sorting, like ABC Capital Holdings uh, Studios and so on. And coming back here, you can find the same custom name, which means QDMS and Acumatic integration is a success. And we can pick and choose our custom name and enter the description and also the detail right here for creating a new complaint. After that, we can assign a solution team to take care of this complaint and attach any document, for example, like the photo or image or the warranty or the contract as a reference for the team. And please let me show you one of the records that we have. It's, uh, for example, this one. So I want to show you as after filling the detail and the description of your uh, of this company, then we can assign a team. And this team has to file the first progress report and also the final report to make sure what is happening and why we have this complaint. And before we close it, we can choose either we create a corrective action in the corrective action module as known as the COPPA module again. So we can save it. So saying before we close it, I want to create a corrective action. And you will be lead to the corrective action module and create a new record in the corrective action module. So saying we have this one, the customer claims, and you will see all the information like customer, the non-conformity and the detail of it will be pulled from the complaint module to this corrective action module. And the solution team that you assigned in the uh, complaints module will be set up as the solution team in this corrective action module. After that, we can attach again the document as a reference or supportive information for this corrective action record. And this is how we can connect or integrate corrective fashion module to the complaints module. Also, in these two modules, you can find the reporting tool in this example will be the cost, uh, complaints report or the cost, uh, corrective action report. And you can also use the graphical report to create the graphical report in the system. And now QDMS is taking us to the graphical report so on the left, you can pick and choose what you want to have on your uh, X axis and Y axis. So let's say uh, the responsible department, and then you can pick up the time frame that you want to have your or for your report. So let's say from uh, 2019, January 1st, and draw your graph. So now you can have an overview like which department has the most corrective action in this graph. And also it showed you in the table with the number uh, of the corrective action. Furthermore, you can export this report into different formats like Excel, image or PDF for sharing with any responsible parties. And besides using um, using QDMS on your uh, web browser, like what I'm doing in my demonstration. It is also available on your mobile, uh, on your handheld device. It is available for Android or iOS device, and you can download QDMS and connect it to your server through this mobile application. And what you can see on your screen is my smartphone which is uh, running in Android system. So you can log into it. 
and enter your credentials, for example, uh, your username and password. And uh, this is, and I can find all my pending tasks on my home screen after login. Okay, and we can manage our um, campaigns and also uh, customer uh, corrective action as, uh, as well. So we can, for example, request our corrective action and you can enter the corrective action source, deployment, and enter the non-conformity right here from your um, handheld device. So saying non-conformity uh, as the detail, okay? And pick and choose the cor uh, corrective action source. It's come to the end of my uh, demonstration. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for the demonstration. So it was on a high level, as I mentioned earlier. And if you'd like to learn more about it, if you have more questions, uh, I keep our contact information on the screen. So let's address some questions. Uh, I've been receiving some questions before the webinar, also during the webinar as well in the chat box. And if you have any questions, of course, you can type in the chat box, please feel free. So one of the questions that I received was actually about the mobile app, which Sam, you address. Uh, can, is there any mobile app that I can use for uh, for managing QDMS? Yes, the other answer is yes. We have the mobile app Sam just showed you uh, on the screen. Uh, it works on uh, iOS devices as well as Android devices, so you can access your uh, your QDMS uh, wherever you like, whether to comply with GMP or any other standard. Uh, another question that I got is about the uh, let me see uh, what are the integration points with Acumetica? That's also a good question. So. Uh, Sam showed uh, uh, some part of it. Basically, um, we had the foundational integration, and then we are deploying the extended integration with Acumetica. We are uh, pulling all the customer information, all the employee information, as well as vendor information from Acumetica periodically. On top of it, we are also pulling the product information from Acumetica. So that is coming to QDMS, and with that uh, foundational information, you can run all your uh, uh, customer complaints, corrective actions, audits, uh, trainings, and other uh, compliance-related uh, activities, basically. In some projects, we have seen that we, we customers like us to send data back to Acumetica, for example, customer complaint, for instance. Uh, we also do that as well. So both systems can talk to each other uh, anyway needed. Depends on the quality management system. So let's just remember these things, quality management systems, they have certain requirements. But in terms of how you are going to run it or at your own organization, it is pretty flexible. So what we see in one company, even if they are in the same industry, they are not, the, they are not doing the same thing. They are not running the quality management system in the same way. So in that sense, we need to be flexible. So we are flexible. And we get that uh, foundation integration from uh, foundation information from Acumetica with the integration. And based on your quality management system, we uh, help both systems talk to each other to pull and push data, which is actually pretty easy. I mean, these are both modern systems. Acumetic is a great technology. And same thing with QDMS uh, is also a great technology. So these two products are working very well together, which we are very happy about. Um, another question that I got is, uh, in addition to good manufacturing practices, we are complying with ISO 13485. Can I use QDMS for that as well? Yes. So. If you are compliant with ISO 13485, highly likely you are in the medical device industry because that's what the ISO is for, for ISO 13485. Um, my answer is yes. So when you're compliant with uh, good manufacturing practices, which uh, I address some of its requirements in terms of managing the facilities, having policies, procedures in place, um, having the traceability in place, uh, also cost managing the customer complaints, right? So all these requirements can be managed on QDM as we show uh, briefly. As for ISO 13485, that's a quality management standard. You can manage your policies and procedures on QDMS uh, in controlled control, uh, document management section. You can uh, manage your customer complaints on the uh, customer complaint uh, module, that section. And uh, you can manage your audits, uh, trainings, calibration, for example, also in QDMS. So you can manage both systems, good manufacturing practices, and ISO 13485 together simultaneously in 
in, in QDMS in one environment. And QDMS is talking to Acumatica, so if you enter data in Acumatica, it'll come also to QDMS automatically, so you don't have to uh, uh, enter data twice, so there is no double entry needed. So, uh, so, that, so that's a great advantage. Um, another question that I have is about uh, Active Directory. Uh, do you do Active Directory? Yes, we do. Uh, so if you have Active Directory in place, we do the Active Directory, directory integration. And once uh, uh, you have any update in your Active Directory, Microsoft Active Directory, we can also you know, pull up the updates into QDMS as to uh, as to name of the users, their email addresses, and other details. That's, uh, that is possible. It's just that you need to make sure uh, that it is safe and secure. The, 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 the passwords are secure, you actually update them regularly, and all the other details, because uh, complying with FDA can be uh, very detailed, and one of the details is actually in, in, in the security piece. So we need to make sure you are following those uh, guidelines accordingly. Um, another question that I have is uh, about the modules. So how many modules am I, am, I, am I allowed to get at a minimum? There is no minimum. You can get one module of QDMS, or you can get more modules of QDMS. I mean, on average, uh, there are certain numbers we see from our customers. I, I don't even want to mention a number, because that's really up to you. You can start with one module, you can build it, and then you can add additional modules. That's perfectly fine. That's one of the advantages of, of QDMS uh, being, being modular, basically. So that is... Uh, that is what I can uh, answer. Um, let me see if there is another question uh, also in the chat box. Some of the questions I get in my private box, some of them I get via email. Uh, let me see. Um, I think I address, uh, I address all the... Okay, I, there is one more question uh, about... Okay, so we have multiple locations, more than one location as to, uh, as to manufacturing. Do you need to deploy once or more than once to, for us to use QDMS in different uh, different uh, different plans? So um, just like Acumatica, QDMS is a, has a web-based architecture. What it means is once we deploy QDMS on your cloud account or on your let's say on-premise server, you can access QDMS from anywhere, just like how you are using Acumatica, I assume. So um, we just need to deploy once, basically. And once we deploy it, you can access your documents, policies, procedures, customer complaints, all these activities uh, at any of your locations. All you need is an internet connection, basically. Once you have it, you pull up the uh, web browser and then just put the, uh, the credentials and the, uh, and the link, just like accessing a you know, regular website, basically. That's, that's just that easy and simple. Um, so just one, one, one deployment is uh, all we need. For, for you to use it. Okay, great. I think I addressed all the questions. Well, uh, before I end this session, I'd like to remind you about our coming sessions uh, next Monday. Uh, again, Quality Mondays continue. Uh, we'll be talking about ISO 9001. The important thing about ISO 9001 is ISO 9001 is basically the holy grail, the foundation of all the quality management systems. So anything that we talk about, ISO 13485, GMP, SPF, and other standards, basically, they all have the ISO 9001 uh, in, the, in the foundation. So in that sense, it's going to be very educational next, uh, next week. Uh, we'll be with uh, ISO certified ISO auditor Alex Kvatero from AM uh, RAS Consulting. So he'll be talking about fundamentals of ISO 9001, and we'll be talking about how you can comply with ISO 9001, by using QDMS and Acumatica together. We'll be also addressing that. Also, we have a special section uh, next week. Uh, we'll be also talking about quality control operations, how you can manage your quality control activities while you are managing your Acumatica ERP system uh, together with QDMS. We'll also show you how you can do it as well. So it's going to be very educational. We uh, hope that you can join us. And you also see also coming uh, webinar sessions as well. We plan everything out. Uh, we are ready to deploy, and every Monday at, at 2 o'clock, we are looking forward to be being with you and, and sharing information with you. I would like to thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for great questions that we have received. Much appreciated. And we are looking forward to seeing you next Monday at 2 o'clock as part of our Quality Mondays uh, webinar sessions, Aki Quality webinar series. And we'll be talking about ISO 9001. I hope you can join us. 
And uh, thank you so much for your time, for your questions. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a nice day. Thank you.